Air pollution is the world's largest single environmental health risk, according to the World Health Organization. Yet we still don't fully understand all the factors that influence air quality. A new generation of pollution monitors could help gather the evidence essential to tackle this increasingly urgent problem. We all have a right to a safe environment, and that includes uh, clean air to, to breathe. We're worried about air pollution because we know it has a significant impact on human health and ultimately on longevity. A lot of people are aware of climate change as being a problem, a global problem. But air quality is a different kind of problem. It's with us now and it's influencing people now. I'm often asked uh, what causes uh, air pollution. And the answer is actually quite complicated because it comes both from traffic, it comes from industry, it's influenced by the weather. It could even come down to which side of the street you walk on. And when you put all this together, you get a very complicated picture. Of course, air quality is measured uh, in the UK at just under a couple of hundred sites. And while that provides a very useful picture about what's happening, it's really far too sparse a network to capture the detail. So the work that we've really, really been doing is to try and fill the gaps in, to try and develop techniques which allow us to measure with something like the precision of the, of the big expensive instruments, but with a much higher density, uh, network density. I'm responsible for air quality policy at the City of London Corporation, and it's very important for me to understand if the actions and measures that I'm recommending and implementing are actually improving air quality outside. And we can only do this by monitoring air quality at specific locations. If we had access to low-cost sensors and we could put these out across the city, we'd have a lot um, better understanding of how pollution varies and be able to assess uh, the policies that we, we're implementing to improve air quality. So we've developed a different kinds of units for different applications. This is one of the very first ones that we've created, which actually just measures three gases. But what we've done is to integrate a GPS receiver and a mobile phone into this unit so that we can communicate the measurements that we're making in real time to a central computer where we can analyze them. On the other hand, here we have something which is, if you like, the very latest development. And this is a more sophisticated unit than you would find anywhere else in the world. And here we're measuring half a dozen plus different gases we're measuring particles, and that big strange thing on the top is actually measuring wind. And we use all this information to understand pollution sources, we can quantify them, we know where they're coming from, and we can build a picture of what we think air quality is like now. We can then compare it with models and then try and predict what it might look like in the future. There are plenty of problems in trying to undertake a pro project of this kind. And while we've been focusing perhaps more on the algorithms, that's the maths that we use to disentangle all the data and try and make sense of it, we've turned to industrial partners like AlphaSense who have been hugely important in developing the sensors themselves. Our market is making gas sensors for industrial safety. This is for confined spaces such as down mines, in sewers, or in other areas where people are at danger of breathing dangerous gases. Working with Cambridge, we found there's an opportunity for also going to the more difficult market of air quality where we're trying to now measure much lower concentrations of gases that are not injurious to safety but injurious to our daily health. One of the outcomes from the project is that we've been able to convince other industrial partners to develop units which can now be deployed as part of these networks and the AQ Mesh is an example of that. Another completely different kind of project is to develop personal monitors for people who already have health problems. So with partners in London, we're developing a, a unit which can be carried very easily by people. And again, we're using just the same technology where people, the information is transmitted to us by mobile phones, where we can then look at the data and analyze the health impact in a, a great deal of detail. There are a huge number of applications which we think this kind of technology can be uh, uh, applied to. One, perhaps the most obvious, is to enhance the measurement network which already exists in the UK so that we can get a much better picture uh, of what air quality looks like and of what we need to do to try and mitigate the effects. Of course, I said the UK, it's not limited to the UK, we're talking about Europe and global. So where is this taking us in the long term? I think one direction it's taking us is into smart cities where we now will begin to manage the way that we travel and behave and work 
with a much better knowledge of the impact that we have on the environment and the environment has on us. And we feel that the work that we're doing is really important strategically as one component of ensuring that society is as safe as we can make it.